What's happening YouTube? Thanks for tuning back into the channel today right here at the Rust Belt Mechanic. We've got some more stuff going on today with the Duramax build and we're going to be focusing in on our heads. As you guys saw in the last video, we got our heads back from the machine shop and now we're going to be focusing on doing a couple little upgrades to them. So you can see right here we've got some comp cams valve springs. Those are going to be going on. We're going to show you guys how to do that. We got some upgraded retainers for them and we're going to be putting them on with some ARP head studs as well. Doing the install on that one. And we might even throw in the uh, rocker arm adjustment to the video also today, depends on how far I get on the build. So make sure you stay tuned. We've got all that coming for you. So here we are, we've got the heads back from the machine shop and I kind of had them do just like a half job so I could show you guys what we do for the other top end, the valve train portion of it. So I had them just do the decking portion of it. They just decked it, cleaned the head, and that was about it. So now we're pulling out the valves one at a time. We've got a valve spring compressor and we're gonna pull our valves out. There's still quite a bit of carbon build up on the tops of these things. So we're gonna get these cleaned off just a little bit here. First, what we're going to be doing, get those out, and then we'll pull out a dirty one. I've kind of already cleaned this one up, but we're going to kind of show you guys this one's pretty clean, and then we'll eventually be lapping that one in. But let me get a dirty one out here for you just to show you what's still in it. Retainers right there. There we are. Now we've got our valve springs. Pulled that. And then let's see how kind of nasty these ones still are. We'll see if we can get it to focus here. Focus, 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 focus. See, so we've got quite a bit of carbon and stuff built up on the valves still some nasty stuff so we're gonna get those cleaned off what I've got for that one is I've got some Mopar EGR valve cleaner or EGR cleaner which is pretty much just Dawn dish soap that we've got in just a little bucket right here that we're gonna be able to put these valves in let them soak a little bit maybe take a little bit of scotch bright to them get them cleaned off so they're nice smooth surface on the top uh, we're going to do these one at a time because we don't really want to change the position that they're in in the head. And then we're going to be uh, lapping them back in for that portion. Also, we're going to be replacing our valve seals too. Don't want to forget that one. We'll show you what we do for pulling the valve seals out. You can see our valve seals are right here. So these ones are actually pretty easy to get off. You just take a little tool to be able to pry up on them evenly back and forth and then that is it they pop right out and then our new ones we've got over here let me grab real quick we've got a bag of our new ones here and then those we'll just kind of put over the cap make sure the seat right here is all nice and cleaned off got a nice even assembly and then these will just push back onto that section as well but the other thing is you don't want to do that until after you're done with your lapping so you can get all of the lapping material out but pretty much it'll just push right on right there okay so we've got another one to uh, lap in right here so we've got our valve got it all cleaned up and then we're gonna take just a little bit of our lapping compound. Ooh, comes out fast. Gotta watch out for that one. So get a little bit of that on the valve itself. And then we're kinda, kinda just 
slip it in real nice and easy like get it in there and then I know a lot of other guys use just a standard valve lapping tool however I've got a special one you got a snap-on drill with a small piece of tubing that just so happens to be the same diameter on the inside as our valve so we will put that one on there and then I'll take a little bit of this soap compound just to touch on my finger so I can give a slight amount of pressure on the back side to the valve while we're kind of turning and giving pressure and pulling on the valve little bits at a time. We're going to switch directions. Just give it a little bit of relief here and there. And that should be about enough there for us. I'm going to get this one off of here. Yep, there in the background we're watching a uh, some YouTube videos here, of course. And then we clean the end off of the valve there, and you can see we've got a nice lapped in edge to it right here. And then our head is also lapped in. So now we're gonna take some rags, clean that off, clean the surface off, and then we're gonna be putting our springs and retainers back on. I'll show you exactly which ones we're putting on. Big shout out to my buddy Justin Dow, running his uh, Saturday live stream here. So what we're gonna be doing is, when you guys put these uh, valve seals in, you're gonna wanna get just a little bit of lubrication on them there, on the inside, just to help them seat into the head a little bit better. And they're just gonna kinda press into place. Because like I said, the inside of these is just, you know, the rubber inset. So we'll get those pushed on just like that. Should be just that easy, guys. And then the valve springs that we've got for you, we've got, here's the part number. You guys can see that. It's a comp cams valve spring number. Now, don't be alarmed. When you guys look these up, they're actually going to come up as a Ford 5.4 or 4.6 uh, competition valve spring. Or if you look into the description below, you know, when you kind of get below there, it says also fits some Duramax applications. <coughs> Excuse me. So that is going to be the one that we will be using for that. It's going to have an increased uh, spring rate on it. They are the 101-113 valve spring diameter. So it's going to match up to the same one. Now the the retainers, you know, is going to match up to that one. The retainers that you're going to want, if you match up to these springs, they're going to be the 701-32 Comp Cams Valve Spring Retainers. Now, it's very hard to tell the difference, but there is a slight difference between the lower seat and the upper seat. The upper seat is going to literally be about a tenth of an inch smaller. So if you can't tell, make sure you measure it, match it up, figure that one out correctly. So now we're going to get these put in there with the new retainers and we're going to use our old uh, or the new hats and then we're going to use our old retainers that we actually took out. So now another little tip or trick for you, you've got these tiny little retainers here and we've got our valve spring compressed with our compressor tool. Now the hardest thing is to get these onto there and make sure they hold on in their correct place. So usually what I like to do is take a little bit of this trans assembly lube, which is, you know, kind of like a midline grease. We're going to wipe that on there. And then we're going to be able to sit this onto our valve here within there. And then that grease is going to hold it into place. So we don't have to worry about it falling out or anything like that. See if we get a close up in there so you can see that one. Yep. We got the grease holding it into place and then we'll get the second retainer and uh, hold that into place and be able to let go of our spring compressor. And now that we've got our valve retainers and everything all seated back into place, you guys get this focus and you guys can see how it's all in there and you guys can see the difference between the size of the valve springs on that portion. So we're still using our same valves but 
the upgraded spring rates so we are not going to have any valve float or anything like that when we're at uh, higher rpm so all in all this is going to be pretty awesome and i've got a lot more valves to do so i'm going to get back to that one and not bore you guys with doing you know 16 of these per cylinder head so yep gonna get to it all right so now we're getting over to putting our cylinder heads on. Prior to, you wanna make sure that you get these things nice and clean. We ended up using a uh, just snap-on, let's see what is this thing, uh, CSA86 USA, yeah. So it's just one of these scrapers to get all the big stuff off, kind of scrape that all down. And then we took a little bit of Scotch-Brite to the areas that were you know, a little bit rough, but we don't wanna take a whiz wheel or anything because this is a nice block. We checked the surface on it and it looks pretty good. Now what we've got is our ARP head studs. We're gonna be putting these in. Uh, you can obviously tell the top from the bottom. Uh, these are coated with a little bit of oil, you know, just a nice, really, really thin coating just to help them kind of turn down in there. The tops of them have an Allen bit on here on the end. I believe they're like a five millimeter Allen. And then we're gonna get these put into all of the openings right here. And then all of these will, there's no torque spec to these. They um, are recommended by ARP to literally just tighten them down hand tight is all they say to do. Three years later, just a nice little slight snug to it. And then our head gaskets, have a look at these over here. We've got a set of GM AC Delco grade C head gaskets. We had our heads milled there and gone through. You guys saw that one. So we make sure that if you guys do have your heads uh, decked, milled, whatever, that you do use grade C head gaskets. So we'll get these put on and we'll get all of our head studs put in as well. All right, so now we've got all of our head studs on and we've got our head gaskets into place. A couple of preliminary things before you do all that, obviously make sure all of your holes are cleaned out of any kind of coolant or debris or anything like that, just so they're nice and even. It's always a good idea to have a look across all of them just to make sure we're even in a line all the way down all of them. So we've got all of those into place. And then another FYI, before you put your heads on and you have them all cleaned and everything, is I would recommend to put your exhaust manifold and intake manifold on, especially on the driver's side. Now, I already put the driver's side on, so don't mention you know that one, because this fact right here on an LBZ, this bolt here on your intake runner and this is your CP3, that bolt does not come out or go in if you guys are trying to take that one off. It does not work. So if you wanted to take your intake runner on or off when uh, the CP3 is in, it doesn't happen. So you either have to pull the head or you have to pull the CP3. I don't want to pull the CP3, so we're gonna put the intake runner onto there. And obviously you can see how nice and painted we got them. And we're gonna get those on there with some of this sealant the Male JV8. This is the sealer that they recommend to use for the intake gaskets because that is actually what came in our head gasket set. Let's see if we can get some numbers off of this one. Doesn't look like it. Uh, there we go. We've got that kit. Yep, right there. That's our head gasket kit and full upper gasket kit that we went with. So we're gonna get some of that put onto the uh, intake little runner. There's a little groove in the channel on that one. And make sure you don't go any more than like uh, a little bit more than an eighth inch bead on that one. Don't want too much squirting out. So we'll get that one put on to that side and we'll get our exhaust manifold on as well because I don't feel like you know, mess around with that tight space in there. So we'll get that put on and then we'll get the head put on. We'll talk about the uh, procedure for getting everything torqued down with these head studs. So when we get our bead of sealant put on, it's just gonna be enough to fill the channel, just like this. I might've got a little bit much in, most, in a couple places, but not too bad. So 
then we're going to get it put onto our intake manifold here which has been all nice and cleaned out and we're going to get put on there and the intake manifold uh, those nuts and bolts are torqued to 18 foot pounds and then the exhaust manifold when we get that put on that one's going to be torqued to 28 foot pounds do a obvious uh, circular motion and putting the bolts and torquing them to proper specs like you'd do that one that one that one that one you know work your way all the way around yeah, I'm using the camera to show. So that's what we're going to do. Get that one on there and then we'll be ready to put the head on. The intake manifold is all torqued onto place. And now we're doing our exhaust manifold. Uh, if you guys were following the build uh, last time, we put the manifolds and the up pipes on and we ended up having to make shift some hardware. This time we picked up the correct hardware from KB Diesel Performance. And they are these nice heat treated 12 point smaller head uh, bolts that we're going to be putting on for the Profab Performance Manifolds. Also made in the USA. Big shout out to them. You guys make some awesome products. Uh, get rid of my goofy plug because we got an EGT sensor coming in for this thing lettered too. So we'll get these torqued down to 28 foot pounds. Now another little tip when you guys are putting these things on, if you're using the factory style multi-layer steel exhaust manifold gaskets, you guys can see that uh, with the Profab Performance or any kind of aftermarket manifold that is, these will be kind of folded over because normally these have a little heat shield built in for the upper bolts. All I like to do is just take a standard pair of pliers and kind of bend them flat so that when we go to put our head studs and nuts on, everything is nice and even and you're not gonna have any kind of issues with clearance for your nuts. So make sure you go ahead and do that one. So last but not least, before you guys get to putting the actual head onto the block here is you're gonna wanna make sure that cylinder number one is on top dead center. This is over here on the dr passenger side. Make sure this one is on top dead center just because that's where we're gonna be starting at with doing our valve lash adjustment, which is what we'll be doing here after we get these things torqued on. So cylinder one, top dead center. Now we'll get to putting the actual head onto the block. Like a boss, sit and tighten right. Yep. So before we start putting these together, you want to make sure that you have the correct lubricant. We've got the ARP Ultra Torque Fastener Assembly Lubricant. Uh, this is gonna be for putting onto our washers. We wanna make sure that we get a good amount put onto each side of the washer. Maybe if I can open it, dummy. So you're gonna to wanna to get it on both sides of the washer, smear it in really good, and then kind of just set it on here. The main point of this one is going to be the most even torque that you possibly can do for when we're torquing these things down. <clears throat> and as you can see, there's a lot of these to do. So you're gonna to want to do them one at a time, make sure you don't miss one. Get a good amount of the assembly lube on each of the washers so they turn just nicely and get them onto there. I also like to take just a little bit on my finger and put it onto the actual threads of the studs. That will give us the best option for the easiest torquing sequence. So when we get that on there, it's going to be able to let us evenly torque them all the way around. Now the four bolts here up top, make sure you put a little bit of the lube onto the threads of those as well so they can get evenly torqued also. So now we're gonna get all of these put onto here and then the actual nuts here, the factory ones that you take off are gonna be a 17 millimeter. The ARP nuts that we have on this one, they're gonna be a 16 millimeter 12 point nut and they're gonna go right onto that point. Make sure again, a little bit of this lube goes a long way. It works great. Put some of that on there and we're gonna get those started. Now, when we start to tighten these, uh, we're gonna have to go into a, a little bit of a tightening sequence here. And I'll show this one on camera, get you guys be able to see that one. 
that is going to be the sequence in which you tighten all of those bolts. You're going to do all of these standard ones here and then the M8s up top afterwards. All on this kit specifically for the LBZ, you're going to be tightening your main head stud nuts down to 125 foot pounds on final, but you want to evenly distribute that over three rounds of torquing. You're going to want to do, usually I do about 50 foot pounds, 95 foot pounds, and then 125 foot pounds on the final round of doing these. And then the smaller M8s, they're going to be tightened to 25 foot pounds. Again, split that up evenly into two or three different torque sequences, and it'll end up being golden for you on that point. Just take your time, do it right, don't miss any. Next we're going to be putting in our push rods and then our rocker bridge assemblies, the bridges and the rocker arms with the bridge to go across. Make sure when you guys are putting these in, you lose, use a generous amount of assembly lube. Uh, you can't ever use too much of this one. We actually have the Lucas High Performance Assembly Loop is what we are using on this one. And then we got us a set of uh, heavy duty forged uh, push rods here. Looks so like part number on this one is HAM 07P006. This is going to be the part number on those. So get some assembly lube on these and get them put into the block. Alright, now we've got all of the push rods put in plenty of assembly lube put onto the ends. Now we've got our rocker bridges already installed as well with plenty of assembly lube put on the pivot points for those as well. As you can tell, make sure you get them in the correct orientation. The curve to them is going to be facing away from your injector opening as to leave enough clearance for that injector and the valve cover to be in there and over that. Now we're going to put our rocker shaft and rocker assemblies into it and then here we're where they tighten each one of those bolts are going to be tightened to 35 foot pounds i'm sorry 30 foot pounds yeah we're going to do those evenly across from the middle out all right so now we're going to get to the point that you guys really want to be able to watch and pay attention we're going to be doing valve lash adjustment now all kinds of different people have different opinions on this. Uh, the actual technical Haynes manual says to tighten these uh, up when you get to 12.012 on their valve lash, 0.012 millimeters. Um, actually then a lot of other people say 011 loose, 011 or even 010 of what I've heard. But I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna go right into the middle. We're going to do a nice even 011 valve lash tolerance on these. Hopefully that'll be able to make things quiet enough for what we're looking for on a nice even startup. And like I said, make sure you got plenty of assembly lube onto your rocket ridges before you guys start this one. Now when I say top dead center on cylinder one, you're going to want to make sure that you are on the compression stroke. Another way to figure that one out is going to be right here on your crankshaft balancer. There's going to be a little notch right there and it's going to match up with that little notch right there on the block. And how you really know is you're going to rotate the engine over and if you see the intake valve opening right before it's going down and then it comes up and the exhaust doesn't does not open it's not open that is going to be your compression stroke that is going to be the first round of numbers that you're going to be doing now i'm going to throw up a picture onto the screen right now and this one right here we're going to be putting all these red arrows on here for you every one of these red arrows are the ones that you are going to be tightening up so now we're going to loosen up right here it's going to be a 14 millimeter nut that is the stop nut and then as you can see it's just a flat head screw that is the adjustment for our backlash so we've got a, an 011 spacer in here and we're going to continue to tighten the set screw down until right about there we've got some just a little bit of drag on that one 
and then that's a pretty good spot right there and we're going to tighten not loosen thank you third hand rookie <laughs> but yeah we've got a nice even spot right there that we're working with Let's see if we can get it fit back in there yep just on the tight side right there so that looks pretty good for that one moving on to the second one here this is going to be our exhaust side we'll loosen up the screw and we've got plenty of lash in here so tighten her up hair right there this is a very nice one filming to have three hands on the operation now we've got just enough we've got just enough to drag it out there without too much grabbing onto that one now for the second round of marks we're going to be rotating the engine over 360 degrees we're going to go with that same mark on the balancer and we're going to rotate it 360 degrees around until cylinder one is on top dead center of the exhaust <clears throat> sorry of the exhaust stroke then we are going to do the valve lash adjustment for these ones highlighted here in this photo we're going to get those lashed up and we will see how things end up looking so now after we're done doing our second round of those now you're going to want to rotate your engine over at least i'd say 10 12 times rotate it all the way over and then look here to find out your intake and obviously as the screwdriver or the piston is going down your intake is going to be opening and then when it's coming back up that intake will be closed obviously that's your compression stroke so check all the valve lash again check the first round of them on a compression stroke and then the second round of them on the exhaust stroke just to make sure everything that is good and into place and then once that is done make sure your lock nuts are tightened to between 16 and 20 foot pounds well guys, that's about all we've got for today's video. Hopefully you enjoyed this one and actually learned something a little bit as well along the way. I know these cylinder heads on these Duramaxes seem a little bit daunting, but they are to a certain extent, but really they just take a whole lot of little bits of time to them. Take your time on them, get everything cleaned up right, valves done, valve lash, all your torque specs, make sure those are all correct as well. Having a motor that is all torqued down correctly, cleaned up properly, is gonna give you peace of mind beyond what any mechanical value usually seems to be. So make sure you guys give this video a thumbs up if you liked it today. Make sure you go check me out on Instagram, Facebook, share where you can, when you can, it always seems to help. Thank you guys for tuning in, I appreciate it. And as always, you guys stay awesome.